I've made some jokes about the Houston Rockets this year. I mean, pretty much everyone would have at some point in time because they've just been awful in terms of winning games. But that doesn't mean they're not doing the right thing for their future. Some would argue they're doing exactly the right thing for their future by not only losing games and gaining a higher chance at a top pick, but also giving players the chance to flourish in a role that they probably otherwise wouldn't have had if you kept around some of those veterans. So I definitely don't dislike what the Rockets are doing. And I already liked when they had Christian Wood, when they brought in Kevin Porter Jr., Jay Sean this season. I already liked that young core. And then all of a sudden, you see the flashes from Kenyon Martin Jr., who over the last three games is averaging 25, 9, and 5. Those are legit numbers. <laughs> Kenyon Martin Jr. is putting up those kind of numbers. I know you saw the Brook Lopez viral thing where he was all scared. Oh. Yeah, but Kenyon Martin Jr. is really like that recently, at least. He's been putting up legitimate numbers, looking like a star in the making for someone that was picked 52nd in last year's draft and I thought was more of a project player, is all of a sudden already producing some serious, not just highlights, but some serious production. And with him coming along and some other guys as well, it's kind of led me to believe the Rockets' future is even brighter than I initially thought when it had Christian Wood, Kevin Porter Jr., and Jay Sean Tate. So before I talk about that, if you could drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel, that would be greatly appreciated. I make content like this close to every single day, and doing so just helps out how the video goes a ton, so that would be much appreciated. But let's start with the obvious reason for the Rockets' optimism. Well, one of the obvious reasons is they have the worst record in the NBA which leads to a very high chance at a top pick. In fact, a 52% chance at getting a top four pick. And a top four pick is pretty important because if they don't get the top four pick, then they end up with the fifth pick, which then gets traded to the Miami Heat and they end up with the Heat's pick. So it's kind of crucial that this team secured those odds so you can understand why they were so hell-bent on tanking. And they've secured those odds. Now it's up to the draft lottery and the draft gods to bless them or take away what could be a really good franchise piece. But if we just look at the potential top four pick they could have, I think they just go for the best player available. I mean, it's kind of easy for me to say, but you look at Cade Cunningham, Jalen Green, Jonathan Kaminga, Jalen Suggs, and of course, Evan Mobley. All of those guys, maybe Evan Mobley doesn't fit the best. I think Christian Wood could still play as a four, but maybe he's not the best fit. Maybe you think Kevin Porter Jr. could be a star as a point guard, but like you're still taking... Cade Cunningham, you're still taking Jalen Suggs, you're still taking Jalen Green if you think they're the best player available. If you think someone's got superstar potential, you're not passing up on them. But that's still a hypothetical. I don't really want to speak on that too much because we still don't know what's going to happen. I mean, they might lose their pick, which would be tragic, but luckily enough, they've still got some talent on their roster, which we may as well talk about. And I've talked about Christian Wood, I've talked about Kevin Porter Jr., who I'm still going to talk about in this video, but I want to start with the guy that I mentioned before, Kenyon Martin Jr., who's been really playing well recently. With an increased role, he's come in and he's showed some signs of being a potential star in the making. I mean, initially he came in and he was playing minutes, he was a spark plug in terms of his athleticism ridiculous athleticism. This guy floats through the air like he's one of those power dunkers. He's going to put people on posters game after game. Miles Bridges kind of guy I could see in terms of his explosiveness, dunking the ball and blocking shots. I mean, we saw him block Rudy Gobert not once, but twice. Met him at the rim twice. That is some special athleticism for someone who's, what, seven inches shorter than Gobert to get up there and meet him at the pinnacle. But when you look outside of just the athleticism, those kind of highlight plays, over the last eight games, he's averaging 18 and seven, which is pretty damn good. Just for context, that is second amongst all rookies for points, only behind, you know, the number one draft pick, Anthony Edwards, pretty good company, I would say, for someone who's seen as the Rookie of the Year by many. Kenyon Martin Jr., in a bigger role, has been able to live up to it, and he's not doing it on some terrible efficiency. He's been pretty efficient doing it, and he's shown signs of doing pretty much everything. I mean, his threes are still pretty much simple catch-and-shoot threes. He's not moving off the dribble or doing anything crazy, but he doesn't really need to. He can still get people up in the air. When they're contesting his threes, if he makes a few, some people will jump at his shots, then all of a sudden he can get to the rim. And he's got some nice touch. He can make those kind of lefty hook shots. He can make those lefty kind of layups. He's got some pretty nice touch around the rim. He's also got a nice ability to pass out of trouble if he's attacking the rim. You'll see him make a pass out to a shooter or even to a cutter, which is something that a lot of rookies normally don't have in their bag. That's something that normally they work on. When you're attacking the rim as a rookie, particularly someone who's drafted late, 
late in the second round with this kind of athleticism to also have good decision-making aspects to his game, that's pretty different. That's not many rookies have that. So he's got that handling the ball is probably a little bit of a weakness right now. He gets himself in a bit of trouble handling the ball, but in terms of finishing and playmaking at his age and in terms of what he was supposed to be right now, it's damn good for someone they literally bought, <laughs> like they paid for the pick instead of actually having the draft pick themselves. That is a steal, like a genuine steal. So Kenyon Martin Jr. is someone to watch out for if you haven't been paying too much attention to him. He's been fantastic. And then moving on, I mean, Kevin Porter Jr., everyone knows the name by now. I mean, he dropped 50 and 10. <laughs> like, if you don't know the name, he dropped 50 and 10 on Drew Holiday. So yeah, that happened. That was kind of crazy. And I didn't expect that. If you've watched my channel, you know I'm a pretty big Kevin Porter Jr. fan, and I've liked what I've seen from him, but I wasn't expecting him to drop 50 and 10 on Drew Holiday in his second year. So that really happened, which I don't think is going to happen too frequently, but it kind of shows his potential. That's what he can be if his jump shot is consistent. That's what it comes down to. If his jump shot is consistent, and then you mix in his handle, he's never had a problem creating space. He's never had a problem getting to the room. He's never had a problem finishing through contact, doing those kind of things. If you can get a consistent jump shot, kind of tone down some of the tough shots that he takes that he doesn't need to take all the time, and also be a bit more careful with the ball, all of a sudden, you've got a potential all-star on your hands, evidenced by the fact he can go off for 50 and 10 in an NBA game, which is still crazy to me, clearly. So that's just something that's ridiculous. And I think also having him alongside someone like Christian Wood, even Jay Sean Tate, Kevin, Kenyon Martin Jr., guys that can all roll to the rim and be effective role men, having him be a pick and roll ball handler. I mean, he hasn't been the most productive guy in the pick and roll, but he's done it a lot. So you can see that's what they're trying to get out of him. They're trying to kind of get rid of all the mistakes he makes in the pick and roll and turn that into a, an effective play because he's got the attributes to be a really good pick and roll ball handler and a really good pick and roll player. And with Christian Wood, that's just a perfect situation for him. And I just talked about him. We may as well just talk about Christian Wood now. He's giving you 20 and 10. He called everyone a casual for not thinking he's an all-star. Like, he is that kind of player. I don't know if he was an all-star this year, but he will be an all-star at some point in his career. He's pretty special offensively. He can get you buckets pretty much any way possible. Like I mentioned, he's a good role man. He's towards the top of the league in terms of possessions as a role man, and his percentage is pretty effective as well. He can shoot the three ball. He's had a little bit of an issue converting on his free throws, which is a little bit surprising considering his touch from the mid-range, from the three-point line, and just around the rim. You would think he wouldn't have too many troubles converting free throws, but maybe it's just a little bit of a slump. I wouldn't have too many concerns over it, but just everything he does. He's got the versatility offensively. He can take players off the dribble. I mean, he crossed over Draymond's green, <laughs> broke his ankles. He can give you a poster. He'll give you 25 and 10 on pretty much any given of a night, and this is someone who's dealt with injuries in his first legitimate year as an NBA starter, and those are the kind of numbers he put up. So to expect him to not improve from this is just ludicrous. He's going to get better. Offensively, he's going to get better. And then defensively, probably his biggest weakness at this point in his career, I wouldn't say all hope is lost defensively. I mean, he's played with last year's Pistons, the back end of last year's Pistons, which was like Thon Maker and those guys. And now this year's Houston Rockets, like terrible teams. And he's still been able to be productive offensively and defensively. He hasn't been terrible. If he can improve on that, then yeah, he's an all-star and he's maybe a franchise player. Maybe he is. I think he could play four as well. I think that's something that if you bring in Evan Mobley, I wouldn't be too worried about playing Christian Wood at the four. I think that could work as well. And then the other guy out of their big three of the young core, if that's the word for it, Jay Sean Tate. I mean, he's someone that does everything well. It's that simple. He's the ultimate glue guy. If there's anything that he has struggled with, it's his three-point shooting. So that has been inconsistent, which... Obviously, you want to see that improve. But in terms of someone who's in the right place at the right time, pretty much 10 times out of 10 defensively and offensively, that's what you're getting with Jay Sean Tate. And that's what you need when you have guys like Kevin Porter Jr. You have guys like Christian Wood who have so much offensive talent. Jay Sean Tate is going to play small ball center. Anyone say small ball center? PJ Tucker 2.0. He's going to play small forward, power forward. He's going to guard multiple positions. He's going to get in the passing lanes. He's going to play great help defense. He's going to hit the occasional spot up three. Hopefully that's going to continue to improve. His playmaking is good. He can roll to the rim like 
There's not too many things he doesn't do. And this is his first legitimate NBA season. I think sometimes people get caught up on age rather than experience. And although he might be 25, he's still only in his first year of NBA basketball. So I think there's still definite room for him to improve. Jay Sean Tate, probably one of the most underrated rookies in this year's class, has been productive all year long on both ends of the floor. And the Rockets have found an absolute gem in him. There's no doubts about that. And then there are other guys worth noting as well. I mean, I wanted to focus on the guys that are probably be the biggest part of the core going forward. Forward, but Kyrie Thomas has had some nice games as a Pistons fan. I always thought he didn't really get the opportunity he deserved. Armani Brooks is a shooter, like he's been shooting lights out recently, and he's a shooter, so you're always going to have an opportunity to play some kind of minutes if you can shoot the ball. He can do that. You've got other guys on the roster as well that have had some games as well, but I'm not going to go through every single player. I'm looking at the guys that I think will be huge pieces for this core going forward, and I think those guys could be pieces as well. And then, of course, I mean, Dirk 2.0. We may as well finish off by talking about Dirk Nowitzki reincarnated. 19 points, 9 boards, 3.5 assists, 57% from the field, 38% from 3, 84% from the free throw line. <laughs> what are we talking about right now? This is Kelly Olynyk at 30 years of age, has just gone to a team that's been really struggling and decided, you know what, I'm going to turn into like an all-star level player out of nowhere, and all of a sudden, maybe he's going to get a huge contract next year. I don't know if the Rockets are going to pay him. I mean, either way, I think Rockets fans are going to be endeared to Kelly Olynyk because these 25 games have been memorable. It's funny to think about it. They got criticized for trading Oladipo, for getting nothing. They literally got a better player. <laughs> like, it's just ridiculous how well he's played. Other than that, like I mentioned, the future is probably brighter than some people might think. They've got a boatload of picks in the James Harden deal as well, which I didn't even really mention, I don't think. They've got the potential of a top four pick, a top one pick, which could be game-changing for this team. Christian Wood is an all-star level player. Kevin Porter Jr. has all-star level talent. Jay Sean Tate is already a fantastic role player. Kenyon Martin Jr. again has that kind of talent as well, potentially all-star level talent with his athleticism and his skill set and this kind of production already. There's a lot to like if you're a Rockets fan. If you did enjoy the video, like would be greatly appreciated. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Other than that, have a great day. I'll catch you next time. Bye.